Hello, my name is Michael Watson and I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual one chapter at a time. Today we're doing chapter 12, which is using grooves. So I'm going to jump right in. I've got two clips here, one MIDI clip that's a drum beat. And I've got one audio clip here that is a different rhythm. And I'm going to use these to demonstrate how grooves work. So the timing and the feel of each of these drum slash rhythm clips in your set can be modified through the use of grooves. And Live comes with a large selection of grooves, which appear as .agr files in the browser. So if you go to your browser, hit Command F or just toggle to the search function over here, search for .agr, make sure you hit all results over here so that this is the one that's highlighted, not another one. As you can see, there's nothing under drums with .agr, but as soon as I go to all results, I get all these awesome groove files and the way that you load a specific groove file is you just take it and you can drag it into your clip or what I prefer is actually dragging it down into your clip box down here. You can see this little blue highlight thingy happens and that's basically where this groove has to be loaded into and uh, you see you've loaded a groove here and to commit it so to actually apply this groove to your specific beat you're gonna have to hit commit. So you probably saw a subtle change in the audio, the transients shifted around ever so slightly and that's exactly what a groove does. It changes the spacing between specific transients to create a different feel in your rhythm. In fact, it actually creates a different rhythm, but the reason I like to say feel is that the change is subtle enough that it's a lot easier to feel the difference than it is to necessarily analyze the difference and say, this note is a 64th note longer than it was, and this other note is a 16th shorter and so forth. You can just feel the difference. It'll feel a little bit more laid back or a little bit more on the front foot or something like that. You can also apply grooves to MIDI files. So I've got a MIDI clip here and it works a little differently. So let's choose the same one, put it into groove, hit commit. So with the audio file, how the grooves work is it's basically a set of instructions for your warp markers that you then apply to your audio file when you hit commit. With the MIDI clip, it's mm, it's similar, but we don't actually have warp markers. It's a lot easier to edit MIDI in that way. As you can see, here's a little gap. So what this algorithm did, it actually pushed certain notes forward and back and elongated certain notes. And what it also does is it changes velocity information so that some hits are louder and more prominent than others. Just to show you the difference, I'm just going to undo. Let's just quantize everything. And um, so I'm just going to have to drag it back in. And now you're here again. And when I commit, I want you to see the subtle change in MIDI. So here. That and uh, velocity. Here you can see the velocity a little bit better on this note. When I commit, it actually goes a lot softer. Now, if this isn't the groove that you wanted, don't worry. You don't have to literally drag every groove into your clip and hit commit and then listen to it. That would take way too long. Instead, you can enable hot swap mode. So if you go down to your clip and click this little recycle looking button next to groove, it'll go orange and you're in hot swap mode. And this is also um, an option in audio. So it's not MIDI specific. Audio and MIDI both have hot swap mode. In fact, hot swap mode is all over the place when you're choosing instruments, when you're choosing samples for your clip. Wherever you see this little recycle button thing, it's basically hot swap mode. And what it does, it allows you to just flip through these presets. As you can hear, I'm getting a preset played to me without doing anything else. I'm literally just clicking, waiting, listening. If you're not hearing anything, chances are you have this preview button not enabled. So it's probably gray on your side. Probably looks like this. In which case, you're going to have to select something which means you're probably going to have to hit something and then uh, make sure preview mode is enabled. Or just hover your mouse over the preview and click like this. But I just like to keep it enabled. So here you can just toggle through them. This is interesting. Here's a crescendo one for four bars. And my hunch is that if I add this to my MIDI file, you're going to see the velocity information go up. I don't think it actually changes the rhythm of anything. So let's just go quantize everything. So I just hit Command A on the keyboard to select all my MIDI notes and then Command U to quantize it. If you want to change your quantize settings, go to Command Shift U and you can change the values you're quantizing to and the amount. Or you can also look down here. You've got your 1 over 16th and hit Command 1 if you want to halve that or Command 2 if you want to double it. 
command 3 for triplet and command 4 to toggle grid on and off. Okay, so I'm going to add this crescendo. I'm going to commit it. Now watch the velocity information. Uh, and there you go. You can see it giving a crescendo. So just have some fun. Flick through these presets, these groove presets, and you might find something that actually turns your EDM track into something with a little bit more spice, a little bit more flavor. Okay, now let's talk about groove parameters. I think this is extremely cool. So these grooves in this groove pool appear in a list. So these grooves, as you can see, appear in a list and all of them have a variety of parameters that you can modify in real time to adjust the behavior of these clips that you're applying the groove to. You can also make your own grooves and save them as your own user preset. So if I click on a groove over here and I hit enter, you can see I've got this little box that appears. Mine was already open because I'd already hit enter earlier. You know how I said earlier that these grooves contain a set of instructions that when you commit them, these set of instructions tell live how to deal with these warp markers, which ones to move forward, which ones to move back. Well, you can actually edit these instructions and you can edit them in this window over here. So I'm going to go through all these different things. So you've got your base and this base chooser determines the timing resolution against which the notes in the groove will be measured. So if my timing resolution is an eighth note, then everything here, quantized timing, random velocity, whatever, all of these notes that are going to be changed in whatever percentage, they're all going to be measured against each eighth note in the bar. So in this case, that's going to be every like half beat because they're two eighth notes in one beat in a four, four time. And uh, notes that fall on the grid exactly aren't moved at all. So the corresponding notes in your clips will also not be moved. Timing. Timing adjusts how much the groove pattern will affect any clips in which you're using. So you can have a really sick groove and you can apply it to your clip and not hear a big, a big difference. And that's probably because your timing setting is quite low, like 10%. But if it's something really high, like 90%, it means that it's going to apply this a lot stronger. Random. This adjusts how much random timing fluctuations will be applied to clips using the selective groove. So at low random values, this can be quite useful just to add like a little human type feel to very quantized electronic loops. If you don't like that, everything is 100% perfect on the grid. But also just be aware that random applies differing randomizations to every voice in your clip so that notes that originally occurred together will now be randomly offset both from the grid and from each other. So at really high values, it could cause some kind of chaos in your clip. So use with caution. Then here we have your velocity, and this adjusts how much the velocity of the notes in clips will be affected by the velocity information stored in groove files. Earlier we had this crescendo. Here you can see the velocity is 100, but if I change this to a smaller amount, then this crescendo wouldn't be as big. Okay, so I just changed the value to minus 100%, and what it did, it actually reversed what I was trying to do. And this is how it works with all the grooves with the velocity parameter. You can choose a number between minus 100 and 100, and um, negative values that affect the groove's velocity will be reversed. So loud notes will play soft, and soft notes will play loud. All right, now this number over here, you see global amount, it's orange. This parameter scales the overall intensity of timing, random, and velocity for all the available groove files. So at 100%, the parameter will be applied at the assigned values. If this is smaller, then only 50% of these settings will be applied. What I mean by 50% is that these settings will only be applied at a 50% intensity. So essentially this velocity parameter is only going to have half its potency because only 50% of this algorithm is going to be applied. And you can also change the global amount as high as 130. Don't ask where they got 130 from, that's like a random number. But anyway, the slider goes up to 130%, which allows for even more exaggerated groove effects. So if grooves are applied to clips in your set, the global amount slider will also appear in Live's control bar. And what I mean by that is you just scroll your mouse up and here next to your tempo and your time signature, you've also got this 130% and this is this global amount number. So you can change the amount that grooves apply to your whole live set by changing this number over here. So you may have noticed when I was committing grooves, every time I commit a groove here, Sorry, hey, my screen capture is like cutting off um, a couple things down here. But every time I hit commit, it jumps to none. This is not a bug. This is just the way it is. So don't freak out when you're like, where did my groove go? I do think it's a little bit misleading because I might think there's not a groove applied to it. Like I think it should actually have the right groove in there and highlight it. 
maybe for a future release i think that'd be really great but anyway just note that that's what it does it does jump to none it's in the manual and it's it's not like a bug with my software or with your software so one super cool thing you can do if i go to midi clip and um let's move the velocity information and um say i change these things say i want to make my own groove and i'm kind of like it sounds better when the second beat in a bar is late and it sounds better when the third beat in the bar is early i'm just shift moving them to disable quantize otherwise it would like snap to the grid as you can see so you can just hit shift while you move them so i'm literally just moving these things around randomly yeah, that sounds really bad, but um, I like it, guys. So I'm going to save it as a preset so that I can apply this weird ass timing inflection that I just made to other things. So how to extract this to the groove? It's quite easy, actually. So it's as simple as going to your clip, right clicking or control clicking to get this context menu and uh, go to extract grooves. And when you extract a groove, it's only going to consider the portions in the playing part of the MIDI clip, so between these markers. So if these markers go over here and I hit extract groove, it's only going to consider this part of the MIDI file and extract this part and not this part. If you like a preset that you found, I've shown you how to extract it from MIDI into a groove, but you can also click the save button over here and uh, you can save this under a new name, new groove, and it'll be saved in your user library groove presets. If you don't want to save it anymore, just hit escape on your keyboard and it'll go away. Now before I end of this video, I'm just going to give you a couple of groove tips to help you get the most out of your grooves. So often live drummers are going to use variations of timing in a particular instrument in order to create a convincing beat. So they might play the hi-hats in time, but they might place the snare hit slightly behind the beat if they want to create like more of a laid back feel. But because these groove files that we are using for our clips apply to your whole drum set, sometimes if you want to create a more realistic groove, it would be better to extract certain parts of your drum. So say for instance, uh, if this were a snare, turn this into a separate MIDI clip and I could apply a groove to only these toms. So if I groove these guys and not the hi-hats in this file, it might sound a little bit more like what you're going for. This kind of subtlety can be quite difficult to achieve with a single clip, so that's why I suggest you make two clips. One clip to be the exact chain with the tight rhythm, and the other one that has the one drum hit in the bar that you want to be slightly off, to just give a different, like a laid back feel or something like that. So you can also use groove files to quantize audio clips like this. So what I mean by that is if you've got some groove and uh, you turn all these parameters to zero except for the quantization setting and you change the bass, then this would quantize all the notes to each beat. Make sure that your global amount is 100 and your quantize is 100. And now you can see it's quantized everything. It hasn't applied the groove. I've literally only used the quantize section of the groove to quantize this audio file. Another cool thing you can do with grooves is you can create texture with this randomization function. And sometimes our drums could do with a little bit more spicing up. So let's take this and duplicate it. I've got two of these. They should be the same. And uh, I want to now create some kind of texture. I want to thicken these drums. And what you can do is you can apply a groove to your duplicated sample. And you can change this random parameter over here. You can commit it. Now these two files, as you can see, are different. Okay, I'm gonna have to put them on, on a scene to play them both at the same time. To me, this random value is a bit too high. This could be cool for some kind of ambient piece or if you're trying to just create a little bit more character with the drums. And of course, the lower your random value, the less randomness will be in the second clip. So I hope that you're feeling inspired to have some fun with your drum tracks and thanks for watching and have fun.